Morning guys. We're at a fly-in camp today, Lawrence Bay Lodge in northern Saskatchewan on Reindeer Lake. I have my buddy Adam Pavick, Kobe Koenigs behind the camera. We're going to be switching off today and our mission, our big pike. That's what this place is renowned for, especially the south end of Reindeer Lake. We're talking 40, 45, even 50 inch class fish. So this is a fly-in camp as you can see, but we were just crazy enough to drag our boats down a really long stretch of dirt road. So we got a couple boats from the Linder crew, 1875 Pro Guides, and we actually brought a bass boat up here loaded with tackle. We're gonna go run some spots this morning where there's some weeds and rock transitions and see if we can connect with a few of these gators. So uh, yeah, let's make it happen. Good fish. Got a fish. I don't know what it is. Jack, I'm gonna drop the raptors here. Not a big one, but a start. That's a good sign. We just had a nice big lake trout come up, and Adam caught a little one. So, being in a zone that's just fishy, seems to be pretty pretty good. I'll take him. I can grab him over the back. I think. Oh yeah, huh? Look at that. Little Z-Man fluke down the hatch. Stocky fish, just a beautiful build. And these big northern and these northern pike. There you go, buddy. So right now we're coming into an island cluster. This is a big island and it has several smaller islands just to the north. Complex, you know, we got saddles, there's a weed bed here, there's some you know, lay down, sunken to the bottom. We have two sets of eyes when we're coming into these areas. One is 360, kind of our terrain map, if you will, showing us what's around us for targets. There's a rock there, you know, there's a rock. If we see weeds, we might see a patch of weeds. And then Mega Live is a tool that's been pretty effective for finding bait fish, big predator fish, and then stocks of weed. So you can see we're getting in an area that has some weed. And you can see that there where I'm not quite getting that level of detail, what, what the height of the weed is, what's the density of the weeds, and then specifically seeing a big pike laying within it. And we'll, we'll see that here today and make some real targeted cast to individual fish. But both of these have been, you know, really awesome tools to have up here. Just kind of fun, you know, looking at the underwater world and adding efficiency to our process. Right there, got him, lost him. No, I got him, he's still on. And I got one on Mega Live too, I'm dropping the raptors. Once you get into a fishy, fishy zone, you want to make sure you fan cast it thoroughly. This guy's ravenous, just a little guy. A little speed demon. But I saw another nice one on Mega Live, so I'm gonna make quick work of this guy and try to get back out there. Let's see where. Got him! Got him on live, man. That was sweet. That was sweet. Got him. Yeah. Ah. I don't know how big he is. I mean, he's decent. Decent fish, not a giant. But that was a cool eat. Look at that guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That was total sharp shooting with him. Total. And that's, that's the power of that kind of technology. See, cast, catch when it's working right. Starter fish, we're hoping for bigger in here, but look at that big old Z-Man fluke. Gosh, look at that boat. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's not always smooth on cam. Oh man, Adam, look at this. We gotta clean, I gotta clean that up. What a mess, man. Oh, I mean, that's a massive dump. I gotta clean that up, Kobe. Holy moly. One thing we've observed here with Mega Live is their belly to the bottom, like right there. We've been, that, we've been seeing those and, and getting a bait bite and then raising them a little bit. So these fish, that means they're belly to the bottom. We're not getting a ball suspended up with you know, target separation all around. I can still see them though, just because the density of the fish is harder than the surrounding soft bottom. So, but it, make, it does make seeing them more challenging. And that also indicates something about their activity level. They're probably not actively feeding right now. 
you know, and that can change throughout the course of the day. So as you fish, you know, you pay attention to the, the fish positioning and, and then are they responding to my bait? So let's try to get a bait on this, what I think could be a fish. I'm scanning, I'm scanning, I'm scanning. I'm looking for like right there, that's a fish. There I am. See that bump on the bottom? Let's see if we can raise him. There he is, 30 foot out, I'm beyond him. Bring that bait above him a little. And you're looking for life. If that, if that mark is moving and changing shape, then that's life. That's a fish. Sometimes it's a stick. But we've been finding that they're fairly inactive, which is fine. That's all information that we're gonna use to make decisions. Typically, you know, when we're heading into kind of a fall pattern, later in the day when surface temps warm, that does tend to increase activity, I would say, as a general rule of thumb. But we're still gonna just pick this apart. We know we're in a fishy area, so we're gonna, we're just gonna go easy with our baits, see if we can't coax a bite. Boy, they're curious beasts. These big old pike are not easy. Everybody thinks, oh, pike, they're easy to catch. These are some ancient fish here, you know? Man, a lot of lookers. And it might be the case where we just end up coming back, you know, at a different point in time today. But we've located a bunch of fish, and that's, that's pretty essential in a lake like this. Got him! That's all right. Oh! <laughs> just video gaming him. He was, yeah, you really got to coax him though. In the spot lock here. Adam, there's just a bunch of fish just kind of scattered around. So we're just, we're gonna keep picking this apart. I don't know if you saw that on the screen guys. That was pretty cool. Just a real, I went more subtle and slow on that cadence just cause they weren't, uh oh, got a problem here. Got a little challenge. Yeah. Snap. Okay, we got, yeah, this is, we got a snap coming undone, but I got lucky and boated this fish. Nice chunk. Ooh, these big single hook jigs are, are pretty nice. I mean, they're an excellent hooking lure. You know, easier to unhook the fish. Ah, there we go. Nice. I guess the biggest challenge coming up here for us, kind of cold turkey and going out and trying to do it yourself is the sheer size of a lake like this. These Canadian lakes are massive. This lake's pushing 1.7. I've, I've seen 2 million acres and every section is just endless. Thousands upon thousands of islands, rock reefs. Finding good weeds has been hard. It's not everywhere. And the pike don't seem to be everywhere either. So, you know, as they say, 90% of the fish are in 10%. I'd say 90% of the fish are in 2% of a lake like this and all the trophic deep cold lake in Northern Canada. So we've been running a lot of spots and you know, if you come into a fly-in like this, boy, the guides are incredibly knowledgeable. There's no replacement for just years and years on the water and running spots. So as good as our modern electronics are, boy, having some respect for just being out here and, and knowing where these fish live is huge. So consider getting a guide and you know, that's usually the program at flying camps, but if you're doing a do it yourself or two, if you can connect with somebody that has some knowledge to help start the process of finding spots, it'll speed your fish catching.